Hey, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Weenie. We got a video today where we're just going to answer one of our viewers' questions. I already answered it, actually, okay. but uh, we'll just bring it up for everyone because if she had this question, others might have this question. And I've certainly had it on the telephone before with like one of the other physicians that are referring someone yes. and sometimes with family members for sure. What's yeah. the diff? What's the diff? What's the difference between a pelvic fracture and a hip fracture? Okay. So both hip and pelvic fracture are part of the pelvis, so they, they share right. that in common, and they're close to the same area. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we better show an x-ray of the pelvis. Okay. Here's, Here's an x-ray of the pelvis. Here's a pelvis. You can see this is the pelvis, yep. uh, and the, the main parts of the pelvis, I would say, is the acetabulum, which yep. is the socket part of the hip, right? and the pubic rami, which is sort of the part of the front of the pelvis, the superior yep. pubic rami, the inferior pubic rami. And then, of course, there's the hip, which is the femur, and the femoral head yep. articulating with the socket to make up the hip joint. Okay, so when you have a hip fracture, either the ball is broken off or even a little bit lower, you get something called an intertrochanteric fracture or a femoral neck fracture. Those are kind of the two main types of hip fractures. We'll make another video about that. Yep. Whereas the pelvic fracture, it's more typically the rami that are broken, those little horizontal areas of bone that are towards the midline, or sometimes it could even technically could be involved in the back of your pelvis, which is your sacrum or your tailbone, that technically could be called a pelvic fracture. Right, so. and we're talking about the most common types of pelvic fracture yes. and the most common type of hip fracture, okay? Yes. Of course, there, if you're in a bad car accident or there's some significant trauma, right. for sure you can have any combination of pelvic and hip fracture. Right. But basically for the most common type of sort of elderly person, hip fracture or yep. pelvic fracture, this is the difference. And the main difference is the pelvic fracture is in the pelvis right. and the hip fracture is in the femur, the proximal okay. femur. So let's talk about who gets these. So usually these are falls from a standing height rather than significant traumatic events, but every now and then they can be. Mm -hmm. They typically present older populations that have osteoporosis or risk factors for osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. They present with either an inability to weight bear, pain in the groin, mm -hmm. or both or some combination thereof. They look alike, don't they? Yeah, they do look a lot alike, agreed. So they present the same. And then really the, the ultimate way to define them or to diagnose them is with an x-ray or some other type of imaging, potentially a CT scan, but usually just an x-ray is needed. That's it, x-ray will make the diagnosis 99% of the time. Yep. You can't get on x-ray, you might need to CT scan. The other hip fracture I sometimes see too would be like a middle-aged guy riding a bike and bawling. Yeah. I see those hip fractures quite often too. Yeah. Um, so that's it, basically hip fracture and pelvic fracture are two different things Pelvic fractures happen in the pelvis. Yep. Hip fractures happen in the proximal femur, yep. which makes up part of the hip joint. And why is it important to distinguish between the two? Well, because the treatment is so different. So now you're like, okay, my, one of my parents has one of these types of fractures. Let's first go with the hip fracture. So one of my parents or grandparents or friend or whatever has a hip fracture. What does that mean for that person? Are they gonna be able to get in a cast? No. no, no. The vast majority of the time, a hip fracture in an adult population is treated surgically. With an operation, yes. Okay, like, oh no, you occasionally. But wait a second, what if my, what if my grandparents really old? Still. Yes. But still, but if still. you're really old, it's still better the, on the risk benefit profile, it favors operating. Gives you the best chance to get back to normal and outside of a bunch of other specific risk factors. Even survive because yes. it'll let you get mobilized and out of bed. Okay. So hip fractures, majority of the time, are treated operatively. What about pelvic fractures? Pelvic fractures in that population, yes. the vast majority of the time, yes. are treated non-operatively. And when you say treated non-operatively, what do they do? Well, it's basically protect the weight bearing, uh, you know, as your pain allows. So what do you mean by protect the weight bearing? Uh, you might need a walker or yeah. a cane or something to help sure. you share the load on that side, whatever Perfect. side of the pelvis. But they're allowed to walk on it, typically. They're allowed to walk on Typically, we let them get up maybe a day or two of bed rest. Right. But usually, we let them get up and walk on it. Right. right and we've talked about this before. Why do we get people? Why do we not say, listen, it takes about six weeks for these fractures to heal, just like most other bones. Why don't we just say, can you just stay in the chair for six weeks and we'll see you in six yeah, weeks? That's not healthy. Right? No. Especially in an elderly population, if you remain immobile for an extended period of time, then you start getting secondary complications like bed sores, yep. pneumonias, uh, muscle blood wasting, blood clots, those kind of things. So we like people to mobilize as quickly as possible. Right, so you control your pain, 
protect your weight bearing, often with the assistance of either an occupational or a physiotherapist. And then as that bone knits together, your pain slowly goes down. So you need less medication. The walking is paradoxically good for the fracture, whereas some fractures say, no, you definitely can't walk on it. Yeah, well, this one you want to get up and, and get moving as you can tolerate. All right. It's like trying to get a teenager out of bed. They can yeah. stay in bed for a month, no problem. And so usually you'd see them early on, see them around the six week mark, as long as there's good yeah. bone there and the pain's okay and they're walking better, usually that's it. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's a pelvic fracture treated vast majority of the time non-operatively. Yep. Hip fracture, vast majority of the time treated operatively. But both present with pain in the groin. So until you get that x-ray, you can't really be sure. Okay. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Please comment on my mustache that's here for seven more days. Oh boy. And to those of you that asked the question, we hope that answered it sufficiently. Yes. To you. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.